Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to tell you how you can temporarily overcome your fear of driving. Now if you normally watch my videos you'll know that I don't believe in bodging things up. I like to fix things properly and thoroughly but just for today I thought we'd mix it up a bit and I'm going to tell you a story about how someone famous <laughs> used this method to great effect. I'm going to tell you how you can do it for yourself and then you'll also understand why so many therapies fail to fix the problem properly and why so many of these experts online don't know what they're talking about. So let's start with this story. You've probably heard of the famous musician Mike Oldfield. He's world famous and he's written classic albums like Tubular Bells. He wrote the music that was used in the film The Exorcist. And he's made many top songs you may know. Um, Moonlight Shadow was one of his biggest hits. Anyway, if you don't know him, you really ought to. <laughs> he's a very famous person. And you've probably heard of a friend of his called Richard Branson. If you haven't heard of either of those people, you've probably been living under a rock or something. <laughs> but Mike Oldfield and Richard Branson are the stars of this story. And this story takes place many years ago, I think it was in the 1970s, and I'll put a link to this in the description below because there's a video I watched where Mike and Richard talk about his problem. <laughs> so this was before they were famous for memory, because I watched this video about a year ago. Mike Oldfield had just written Tubular Bells, and people thought it was wacky. It's like what is this weird music? No one's ever heard anything like this before. And Richard Branson, who was just at the time starting his music label, Virgin Music, he heard it and thought, I'm going to take a punt on this young musician. So <laughs> the story goes, and this is told by Richard and Mike themselves, so it's true, they were on their way to this concert or something he was some kind of I think he was the first ever public um, playing of tubular bells and there were going to be some really important music people there influencers as they may be called big music bosses really important people <laughs> and Richard Branson had a lot riding on this because at the time he wasn't anywhere near as rich as he is now but he was on the way <laughs> to this concert with Mike Oldfield and Mike said to Richard I can't do it and Richard said what do you mean you can't do it and Mike Oldfield said I can't do it there's no way I can play in front of all these people and I'm going to be so nervous and I, I'm sorry I just can't do it and Richard Brunson was <laughs> you've got to do it he had millions of pounds riding on Mike playing this music and like promoting it and Richard was in a real fix because he thought I've got to get him to play this you know he had this fear this anxiety this is where it all links with driving <laughs> and Richard Branson thought what can I do what can I say I've got to get him to perform and he said I know if you do this gig I'll give you the keys to a Bentley so a Bentley is a really expensive car if you don't know they're worth like hundred twenty thousand pounds plus or whatever and Mike Oldfield said oh you mean I'll get a Bentley if I do this and Richard said yeah and Mike said oh yeah yeah I'll do it and he went did the concert became world famous Richard Brunson made hundreds of millions and the rest is history. So you see how you can temporarily override anxiety. Now it didn't fix the problem and my understanding of watching videos of Mike Oldfield is he was always quite a shy person. He was always quite reclusive. He never really liked being in the spotlight. Isn't that funny how someone so rich and famous and influential is so shy? But this shows you can temporarily override a problem. 
And this is the kind of therapy I don't normally do. This is why you'll find, if you look online, people saying things like, have a purpose to your journey. Like, think of somewhere you want to go, like a theme park or a friend's house, and have a purpose to your journey. And you'll think, oh yeah, the benefits of doing this. Yeah, the benefits outweigh the bad things. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go and I'm going to enjoy this. Yes, it can work. So if you want a short-term bit of relief from driving anxiety, yes, you can think of something like, I'm going to drive to McDonald's. I'm going to go and have some special meal or I'm going to a cinema or whatever. And that can temporarily override the problem because you'll think of the benefits of what you're gain rather than what you're losing. But please understand that will not permanently fix the problem. And some people say it does. And then a while later, boom, the problem comes back. Because it's what we call the benefits approach. And it's probably the weakest kind of therapy there is. It's like suggestion therapy. When people say, close your eyes and imagine yourself driving and you can drive. It's very weak therapy that it's just <clears throat> suggestions it doesn't change anything it's just very flimsy amateur therapy it isn't like going deep into your subconscious mind finding what the root cause is ripping it out or changing it however you want to phrase it and imagine you get the problem and you go Poof, and you've cast it away and it's never going to come back then your problem can still return because throughout your life people say to me can you guarantee it will never ever come back that's like going to a doctor and saying doctor i've got a cough can you give me something to get rid of it and i want you to guarantee i'll never have a cough again for the rest of my life is that possible no because life happens right you can't guarantee that he won't come back years later because sometimes what happens is people have like a default way of expressing anxiety which for some people is driving so you can fix it but if you don't do it properly it can easily come back very easily so if you only use these kind of bodging methods like CBT which stands for coping and bodging techniques <laughs> That's what it is. It just teaches you to bodge the problem up and cope with it. What I do fixes it. And it doesn't always work. But if you do it properly, you can get your problem out, cast it away, and it's gone. So if you want some short-term relief from your problem, you can always do a Mike Oldfield and just think of something that will greatly benefit you. And it kind of distracts your mind takes your mind off the problem but it won't fix the problem fully if you want to work with me online one-to-one -one, from anywhere in the world to fix your problem contact me through my website firstdrive.com check out these other videos on the screen now for more help overcoming your fears and phobias thanks for watching and as always i'll see you again soon for more videos